Hey guys, so now we're ready to start with uh, some tips and tricks for exercise one. And really, you know, a very basic tutorial uh, to help you, in a sense, rebuild or reimagine what you did on uh, Adobe. Okay. And so, as you can see here, I've already made my own uh, artboard. And in this case, I said it was an artboard that's square. Uh, as I mentioned to everybody during class, I expect each of you to design, select the size of your artboard individually, and it has to have a certain size uh, limit. So please make sure that you follow those two directions and watch the previous tutorial on how to make your own artboard. And so you should, you know, start with something that looks like this. And now if we think about our exercise, you know, the way that we actually did it by hand is we started and we drew, right, these sort of diagonal lines. Um, and we had to then draw lines that were parallel to each other, right? And so we, we, we basically uh, I began to identify uh, kind of one axis, and then we sort of crisscrossed it with another axis, right? And then the same thing with that other axis, we kind of had to make those be parallel lines to each other. Um, once we had that, then we started and we started making vertical lines that sort of uh, helped us to find uh, our, our, our vertical axis, so uh, we call here our Z axis. And then with, with that information, now we had enough to sort of start imagining where certain planes of space could be. Okay, right? So now I'm gonna show you how to actually this in a kind of through using through a kind of a set of quick uh, things in order to create a grid across your page and do this sort of very, very quickly and efficiently. Okay, so that's really what the idea of this exercise, why the idea of doing it uh, digitally uh, for a second time is to really begin to think about, you know, what are some of the advantages that we get when we build things digitally and how can we sort of use technology to help us. Uh, explore things uh, maybe a little faster, or uh, in this case, and so you'll see here. I keep sort of like uh, holding uh, and and making copies of this. So let me show you actually exactly how you do that. So once you've made any line, and of course you could do this with any. I could do this one or that one. So uh, I'll start out with this first one. What you actually do the the command is that you hold shift. You press Alt and you hold Shift, and then that creates a copy. Uh, you can actually just create copies by uh, by pressing the Alt button, right? Uh, holding Shift just actually keeps them within that same axis, right? And so uh, I can do this sort of uh, infinitely. I can grab more things at the same time and copy them and paste them. Right? So we can sort of very quickly begin. The, the advantage of that now is that very quickly, we are sort of reproducing this sort of grid that we had to create by hand on paper. We can sort of make it quickly on our digital part. And so once you've sort of started started doing that, right, the, the difficulty here is that the spacing, right, is uh, sort of ambiguous. You really have no idea what it is. So a couple of things. One is that on your view, you can actually go into your view and you can ask to see rulers. So you can go to here, down to rulers, show rulers, and it will show you your rulers here. And you can actually right click on those and set how you want to see them, whether in inches or millimeters, et cetera. Right, so now I guess, now you can also drag uh, from the ruler. If you just hold the uh, left button and bring it down, you can drag and see sort of like uh, guidelines. And then you could imagine, begin to more specifically delineate where things are exactly and what the spacing of them is, right? That would be one way to do this. That'd be kind of tedious, right? So I'm gonna actually show you some couple of quick tricks here, right? So I'm actually gonna do this. I'm gonna make a couple of extra ones and I'm gonna put my last one here so that it, it lines up perfectly with that point. And I'm gonna make one more here and I'm gonna have it lined up. Okay, um, so then after that, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to grab everything here and and align it and space it. 
Okay. And so to do that, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to select it. And you guys will have to go down here and make sure that uh, you have your align buttons or, or tab open. Uh, I already have mine, so it just shows up here. But if you just click on that, it'll bring it out. It looks something like this, right? So now that I've selected all my objects, I can actually use them now to align them all to this back end, for example, and make sure that all of them have the same back edge here, right? And now I can also then distribute the space and make sure that the space is equal, right? So for example, I uh, distribute the space equally along the horizontal. Uh, in this case, to the vertical distance. He wants that there are four guys, right? So now all of a sudden, right, I went from this very disorganized bridge to something that is quite organized uh, and has equal space, right? And so now that we 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 have all of uh, our lines in an in let's say in that x axis or this direction, right? I'm actually going to grab all of them. And like I said, I love using layers, so I'm going to uh, go into layers, and I'm going to actually assign them to layer one, and I'm going to uh, lock that. Okay, so now nothing can be done to them. Uh, you can always unlock them if you want to change things, but for now, right, to make sure that we don't accidentally uh, change those, then uh, then we'll, we'll lock it. Right. So now I go ahead and press on layer two again, and I sort of can repeat that process. Right, so now I can take this, same thing here, but I can put right here to copy. A lot of them. Right, and this is where you will, will begin to dictate. Uh, how 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 you want these to space? Uh, you you know you have to remember you don't have to have these equal space. Uh, they do have to be parallel to each other, um, and you do have to have two axes to sort of create a plane, right? But aside from that, you, this is just to show you if you wanted them to all be right there, it's one way to do it. Uh, but you don't have to. Okay. So same thing again. I'm going to grab all of them. Now I'm going to go here. I'm going to align. Space and you can see here again. Now I've created a grid, and this uh, grid isn't. Um, it's not. They're not perpendicular to each other, right? Uh, and it, they are regular, but they're also not evenly spaced. So they're just kind of like they form essentially, you know, rectangles as opposed to squares. That's totally fine, right? So now I'm going to take all that information, and I'm going to place it. In another layer. I'll leave it in layer two, but I'll go in case I'll lock it. And I'll add a layer, layer three. And now this is where in layer three, now I'm going to start placing verticals. And uh, you'll see here. I started placing my verticals. And in this case, because this grid is not regular, it's open, right? Uh, that my grid will, my verticals will align uh, across a certain direction, but won't align across another, right? So there's kind of a misalignment. And that actually is totally fine. We're still delineating a vertical space. Uh, it's just that it's only a vertical space of like this area vertically. Um, and so we can actually continue doing this. And I, I'd have to actually be more specific about it, but this is totally fine. And I can begin to delineate space, right? Um, so now that we've, we've done this, let's say, let's, let me just uh, make a couple of additional ones um, here. This one's actually a specific point. Okay, so we, we've delineated a, a, a couple. We, we probably need a lot more uh, to actually fill up all of the rest of our planes on the side. 
Um, but this will get us started. So uh, now I have all of that in that one final layer. Okay. So now uh, you can actually start infilling this with your tones to create spaces, right? And so to do that, uh, we're going to actually copy everything. So I'm going to turn everything, on, uh, unlock everything. I'm going to create actually a fourth layer, and I'm going to grab everything, and I'm going to copy. So press Control C, and then I'm going to select that fourth layer, and then I'm going to go to Edit, Paste in. And you'll see now we've added everything onto a top layer. So I'm going to now go back, lock all of these, and hide them. Okay. So what's important about this is now all of these are on the same layer. But if I ever want to go back and modify any of those different layers, I still have the original layer. Okay. So uh, here we go. Here they're all on the same layer, and you'll see why it's important. Now that they're all on the same layer, I can now actually grab them and go to File, or sorry, Edit. Uh, never mind, it's an object. Uh, live paint and make. Okay. Once I've made this, all of these objects together into a live paint, the advantage of that is now I can go here and you'll see this little tab, which usually looks like this, but I can actually go back and change it to my live paint bucket. And now I can actually paint and color inside of all of these different spaces with particular tones, right? And so now I've, I've, I've identified my fill and my stroke. We talked about those in the last tutorial. And so for the stroke, I actually don't want this to be fill. And for the fill, I want to fill with different particular tones. Right? And so here I'm going to say, I'm going to go down, scroll down, right? And I'm going to start first filling with this tone, the second white one. So I'm going to use this as my tone that is essentially flat on the ground, let's say. Right, and so I can start now infilling, and it will paint essentially a bucket everything that is set, that that I tell it to. Right. So now let's say this is how that starts to be. Now let's say I want to sh show a vertical sort of uh, surface as it goes up. Let's change our tone, as you can see. And now I can start filling in. A vertical surface from there would look like, right? And so we can begin to identify that surface. You will see here, well, this is actually this now we had because I put a vertical here, I was actually delineating this as something else. So maybe I change that that plane as something else. Right? So we begin to identify that plane as something else, right? If I let go, now we can start to see how just using that basic system, we've started to delineate planes in different locations. Now, as you'll see, this looks a little weird and funky right here, right? Uh, and that's because if I go back and I turn on my other, right? We don't have a horizontal or a, a, a line in our X uh, axis that hits at this point and then goes in that direction. So we can actually now go in and add one there. If we wanted to, to have something else uh, to play with, we could add it there. Um, an easier way to do all of this and make sure that this kind of problem doesn't arise would be to make sure that your, your X and your Y axis are actually square. Um, and so to do that, I'm gonna actually show you uh, something. Slightly different. Okay. So this is you, but you can now begin to see how you can begin to do this in this system in which they're the X and the Y are different sizes. You have more say in the in the exact dimensions of things. You have more room to make decisions. The decisions are more idiosyncratic. And uh, it creates, you know, I think a more varied kind of uh, image, right? I think this is a great way to, to begin to play. If you want something more ordered, then I think that the, the, the first thing to do is actually go back and hide this, hide that, hide this, okay? And go back to this first uh, 
layer, grab all of it, let's make a new layer. Let's call this layer one. And let's grab all this, let's copy it, let's hold on to here, let's paste it in place. And now actually, in, we're gonna mirror it. So we're gonna transform. So we're gonna go to object, transform, reflect. We're gonna reflect it vertically across, okay? So the advantage of doing that now is that we do actually have a perpendicular uh, grid that is also like Right, so now these two are speaking in a sense the same language, right? Um, and we can think of this as a, as a regular grid. Now, now that we have that, we're gonna uh, add a new layer. This will be our, I'm gonna call this layer 1.2. Uh, this will be our vertical for these. But you'll see now that as when we draw our verticals, our verticals are gonna align with all of our and this happens because we have a rectangle. Right? So all of a sudden, right, I can uh, make this and I can actually begin to just do the same thing that I did before, loosely associated. So we need the same number of lines as we have intersection points. So this maybe is a little bit slow, but will get us a little So I'm just sort of not exactly hitting the, the lines yet for those intersection points, but I'm getting close enough to make sure that I've accounted for all of them, right? And now I can once again lock these guys, grab all of those, and make sure that they're even space. And they should hit our axis. By our intersections. So there we go. That is that looks good. I actually am looking at it and noticing there's a little bit of a slight discrepancy. Uh, and that's because we don't actually hit there. So uh, I'm going to here move this out just a hair. I think it's probably where the actual intersection is. Uh, and then grab them all again. Uh, one. So we're all us, uh, in this case, I'm actually going to delete these two because they were not seen them actually be at their intersection. So all we have to do in this case is make sure that you know this one aligns right there perfectly where we want it, and this one aligns perfectly where we want it. Does now if we grab all the others, they should now be centered as they want. Okay. There we go. Perfect. So there we go, that looks like a nice grid. I'm gonna take them all and I'm gonna enlarge them, bulkate them. And now they cover with gold. And so now actually, same thing again, I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna make one addition over here, call it And now I can unlock these, grab it, tap, press on my layer, copy, paste, lock all those, hide all those. And now I can grab this one, right? And I can now begin to take this. Again, go to live paint, take my paint, make sure I'm on the bucket, fill it, right? And select my stroke colors. And now I can start again in filling. Play with how to build space, right? And so on this page. And so all of a sudden, you can see very quickly here, we can delete one plane versus another, versus that third. And of course, we have additionally uh, two more colors that we can use to begin to talk about how, for example, maybe this is some place that would be darker. It was inside of some place else or the white that is really the enemies, et cetera. So you can begin to use other uh, colors to begin to give us additional information um, that is more than just the uh, differentiation of the planes that you begin to um, 
tell us about death and other other things. So, and so we could continue this. Now you're seeing the whole full grid there, and we're seeing that full grid uh, because we we had it delineated here. Uh, if we didn't want to do that, we can actually just change that to that, and then we wouldn't see that at all. And so, as you begin to play, you can uh, begin to see how maybe you can create all sorts of different types of spaces. I've left the grid here on the background, you know, like uh, shading it just so you get a sense of how you could uh, begin to imagine. Understand how you're creating a sort of physical, in a sense, a, a representation of physical space. Okay, and that's it. So, uh, you know, go ahead and you can take a shot of this. I would actually play with both, both the regular grid and the irregular grid. And depending on what you did for your uh, physical drawing, you'll have, in a sense, try to reproduce that now in your digital drawing. And so that might inform what you have. Okay, guys, so I'll see you next week and with the next tutorial. Bye.